Hello, my friends, and welcome back. Thank you very much for being with me again today. I'm pretty certain that by now you know that there were a lot of uh, pro-Palestinian um, uh, demonstrations um, around the world, let's put it this way. But it's very strange that that around the world was not Russia, was not Romania, was not Poland, was not Bulgaria, was not Czech Republic, Slovakia. Uh, the Eastern European countries uh, did not have this kind of uh, rallies in support of Palestine or Israel. Uh, and I'm mentioning Russia as well. Why is that? Nothing in, uh, in Africa, and I'm talking about Africa, I'm not talking about Morocco or Algeria. I'm talking about, you know, uh, Sub-Saharan Africa, let's put it that way. Non-Arab countries, let's put it nicely, all right? Or Asia. Or South America. Do you know why? Well, why do you think? Is it because I don't know? Do you think I don't care? Do you think it's proximity to the war? It can't be. Because Eastern Europe is closer to the conflict than the Western Europe or America or Canada. So how come in Canada, United States, Germany, France, just to mention a few, Sydney, Australia, Western countries, Western countries, they have rallies. Why do we have uh, London, Great Britain, England, whatever? Why do you think that is? Could it be because they have uh, some people over there of certain kind of ancestry? Uh, all right, well, just giving you a, um, asking a question. I know the answer, but hey, let's play dumb a little bit. So Hamas attacks on Israel spark rallies from Sydney to Berlin. And the first thing is here, <laughs> coming after the killing of 1,600 Israelis, the demonstrations were widely condemned. Widely. I don't remember Venezuela condemning it. Or I know Chile, Zimbabwe, I don't know, Vietnam. Did they condemn anything? So when you say widely, you talk about your little world, your little world under the control of... <laughs> yeah? All right, you see, and coming after the killing of 1,600 Israelis. Okay, how many Palestinians died? Crickets, 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 bzz, like a dead person. Beep. No, my beep, beep. no more. So, you see, Alexander Nazarian, who is an Armenian by the uh, last name, I would say, senior White House correspondent. Good job, good job. So, let's see what's going on. You see here? Just look. I mean, we can play dumb. I mean, I can look over here and I can see this guy. I can see this guy. I can see this guy. Okay, I can see this woman here. I see that guy. But I see that guy. I see this guy. I see that guy. I see that woman. I see that woman. These guys are not blue-eyed, blonde-haired. I mean, I'm joking, obviously, right? So, this is where? This is uh, in Toronto, Ontario. Toronto. So... If these guys would not be here, let's say, I'm just giving you, I'm not implying that this, uh, this, these guys would not be over there, you would probably not see this kind of demonstration. Pro-Israel or against Israel, pro-Hamas or pro-Palestine or against Palestine and blah, 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 blah. But you have it. So, remember, when you bring people in and you bring too many, you know, these guys are going to keep enclaves in your countries, my friends. They will keep enclaves that will refuse to learn your language, refuse to learn your culture. They would live at the first world living standard on with their culture. They will not assimilate. And you, you might say, why would they? Well, 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 if I come to your house because I want to come to your house, not because you want me to come, I come to your house. I come to your house and I start changing your drapes or the time when we, you guys eat, we have dinner or what, what kind of food we gonna all have now because I'm over there, because I came to you, you didn't come to me. So you see, it's kind of, uh, if you make things better, it's a different thing, but if you make it to fit your needs, it's a little bit, you know, how should I put it? Um, not okay. Let's put it mildly. Uh, remember, now is the, this situation with Palestine, <coughs> with Gaza, with the Israelis, and so on. But it can be with others. And the others, remember what happened with the Indians and with the Chinese. 
in Canada, I'm going to give you Canada as an example, since these guys were uh, in Canada. You remember what happened when uh, these idiots in Canada, I'm talking about, uh, I was about to say Lavrov, uh, Justin Trudeau, they, uh, did arrest that CEO for a while, how way, why way, whatever. You remember what the, those guys did? Remember how many Canadians live in China and how many Chinese of China, Chinese origin live in, or first generation, live in Canada. Do you think that out of all those people, you will not have certain kind of people that still love their country and they like working for more money in your country and this becomes their country? India. How many Indians are in Canada and how many Canadians are in India? My friends, uh, subversive actions are always available in every country. The problem is what I have on you and what you have on me. And on both these sides, China and India, Canada is screwed. It's in a big disadvantage. Why? Because it have, has the big minorities. So here the same. Why is Russia not having this problem? It has a Muslim population in, in, uh, in um, Russia. Why Romania? I don't see anything like this. Remember, I'm not saying this is a bad thing of expressing your views. No, you express your views freely, without being afraid of negative consequences. No punishment for expressing your views, because if there's punishment, then that means you're going to auto-censor. That means you're not free anymore. Not by be making it illegal, by being afraid to say something because you're going to be starving in the future. Because some people would put pressure on your free speech. That's for you're going to keep your mouth shut. That's why people keep their mouth shut at work. If you go to work and say, you know what, that, that, fuck that, they're going to fire you. Why? Unrelated to your work performance. Unrelated. So nevertheless, my point is, you guys, the Western Europe, got a lot of groups in your countries. The problem is when their, their countries have problems with one another, that would spill in your country, now their country. And they will ask you to implement certain cultural particularities that they have. And you would say, how can't we? You will not be able because they will vote you out. They will vote. Once that minority becomes too big, it's uncontrollable and it's going to turn your country in their culture, their, their country. I mean, good or bad, I'm not saying the immigrants bring bad stuff, but still, some people like to drive on the left side of the road. When you're going to have more people, recent immigrants coming from a left road driving country, they would like that to be implemented in your country. And you would say, yes, they vote me out. And you're going to be okay with that. All right. There's some negative cultural influence as well. For instance, let's say minor arranged marriages. Some countries have that okay with. What if you're going to have people coming from this kind of country where it's legal in their country, do a cultural thing in your country, and they will have, let's say, the, uh, uh, the province of Ontario, a majority of these people who's going to vote someone and going to change legally, you know, the policies or whatever you want to call the laws. What are you going to do about it? Nothing. They did it legally. All right, my friends, that's, uh, that, that I'm, I'm focusing on the negative because the positives are self evident But the negative, remember what happened? I'm going to use this one and I'm done. Um, what happened in 1973 in uh, Munich? I think it was the uh, Summer Olympics hosted by uh, Germany, Western Germany. And remember what those uh, terrorists uh, did to the Israeli Olympic team? You remember? And eventually they were killed and all that and all that. Well, why? Why did that spill into Germany, into our celebrations? Olympics come from Greece. We are the ancestors culturally and uh, how do I, I put it as a civilization coming from Greece. They call it now Judeo-Christian tralala because they want to change shit. Okay, you can do that. <laughs> if you do that, you're going to have collective punishment and you're going to have uh, uh, guilty uh, to, to the seventh generation and all that. Uh, killing uh, because uh, adultery with rocks. That's what you're going to have. So when they say Judeo-Christian uh, origin, 
okay, all right, you can have that, but without the Greeks and the Romans, you would have a different kind of culture here, all right? So anyway, let's move on. So in Berlin, what happened? In Berlin, in, uh, in Munich, those guys spilled their garbage, their garbage, brought it to Germany on our, our Olympics. That, but we were inclusive and you got that garbage in your country. And then guess what? The victims, which were the Israelis at that point, right? The team, they sued the German government and they get reparation. Do you know that? Because the Germans could not protect their, their team being slaughtered by those guys. Something that the Germany had nothing to do with. It happened in their country, but it spilled there. So remember, I'm waiting, not because I'm waiting like this, but I guarantee you 99% that this that you see right here will spill into something else. Maybe not today, not tomorrow, but in the near future. Because this, uh, this kind of things you didn't see in, uh, in Western world, let's put it this way, let's say 20 years ago or 30 years ago. No, because they were not so numerous, but now they are more. And you know, the right to protest, but how are these guys going to contain it? They can't. And they don't, they don't want to face the reality. What's the reality? You fucked yourselves. Uh, well, as I said, uh, this don't, didn't turn violent or anything like that. The thing is just, uh, and here, let me show you this. Both pro-Israeli and pro-Palestinian protests have broken out with heated rhetoric, in some cases de developing into ugly displays of anti-Semitism, including chants of pa -pa 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 in Sydney. And not only that, they start fighting, fist fighting. Do you have that? Would you have that? Now you have it. So uh, you have to make sure that you, you vet people who come in your country. But uh, I think Western Europe and, and United States and Canada are uh, just losing it. And why? For various reasons. And I have uh, Henry Kissinger, the former, uh, how do you call it, Secretary of State. Um, how do you call it? Yeah, Secretary of State? No, I don't call it Secretary of State. Uh, foreign Minister, let's put it this way. It's easier. I always uh, I like Blinken. And he was an advisor, a presidential advisor. Henry Kissinger He's Jewish came from Germany uh, during the uh, Second World War um, Holocaust. <laughs> anyway, he said that, uh, well, the immigration, uh, you up. I'm going to cover that in the, next, in the next video, probably. Thank you very much for uh, <laughs> being with me again today. Stay strong, stay smart, look for the truth and be just.